thing of your opponent as they adapt to you while you're adapting to them. And that's part of the fun of a fighting game in general. Fiend showing that he had the upper hand in that situation. Ends with the Delight Sider, and now we're going straight into map striking between Wesley and Stardeath, Azoth versus Macho Man, the epic crossover for Olgrim. We've got an Axe Ditto coming up as we go over to, I think it was, a oh, Demon Islands, not Apocalypse, for Three, game number one. Two, one. Now, I said we might see a lot of Hammer today, more Hammer than uh, previously, but that is not the case so far. We have seen quite a lot of Axe, though. The heavy weapon meta is still alive and well in South America. Wesley, of course, coming in with this extremely meta Olgrim pick right now. We saw Infermini do a bunch of great work with Olgrim earlier today. Uh, we also saw some great Olgrim work yesterday in South America and Australia, and I'm sure we might see some Olgrim work uh, when the North American tournament is postponed as well, and of course we'll see it next week in 2v2s. But very little initiation from either one of these players so far. Yeah, so far this was trying to get as little damage as possible. Silates are hitting, but not much more is following up. We see Wesley with those nares, not going for the rear four nares that you would expect a Lance player to go for after connecting one. Bring up Sider for Sider. Nice shot with that down air, but nice dodge from Stardust. Delaying it just long enough to avoid getting burned by the down light, but Recovery comes through. Dodges immediately away from Stardust side airs, and none of these axe attacks can connect. That's why Stardust switches immediately over to the bow. Side light hits, and oh, what? Went for the side light neutral signature, man. Okay, oh. there we go. That's. I'm surprised he went for the neutral signature the first time when he does have sidelight recovery as the kill option and he is a lance player like in winter championships we saw him play lance as well of course notably playing the Vrax one of my favorite Vraxes that I've seen in quite some time since it's so rare but he didn't go for the sidelight recovery as the knockout option first. Ooh. Wesley taking the unique positioning that he was given from that sidelight nair to get the gravity cancel downlight on the star death forcing him off the stage and no jumps are left and he recognizes he goes wait I can tell which is surprising considering that Stardust is using the black color scheme on Demon Island. <laughs> He's out of jumps, right? Because usually you, <laughs> you, you tell by the fact that their character models faded away. But great job from him with that edge guard. Nutrison caught him just late enough, and now Wesley's up 3 to 1. And it's interesting that he did go for the sidelight in air GCD light because normally you see the ground pound is the third option and the recovery is the third option, or they'll wait and maybe go for a Sare. But. GC Delight as the third option. That was like vintage axe when that combo started becoming a thing. GC Delight was the first thing people started going for it. Then that yeah. fell out of favor. Now Wesley's doing it again. Well, and it's because the positioning that you get from a sidelight as you do more damage just puts you away from making it true. But because he caught him with that sidelight halfway in the air, uh, that enabled him to be able to get that down. That was really interesting to see. That he didn't go for the ground pound there. Stardeth, uh, being hit by that side leg, went for the neutral stick, and I think that would have worked if Wesley sided a little bit sooner. Azoth's neutral stick's pretty cool because it has that, that arrow that shoots a second time behind him. You catch a lot of uh, the, the little ghosty man does not have a hitbox, though. Like, the arrow that comes out of him does, but it's not like Bodvar's uh, neutral stick on Hammer where the bear itself has the hitbox. Uh, there I is see. no hitbox on the ghosty man. So he is going to have to be in the air for that to hit. Right, so if you're grounded, you're not going to... The man's just, it's just a ghost, he can't do anything to you. And that's thats one of the reasons that Signature is not favored super highly. Uh, Azoth already not a super meta pick. We have a six defense Grim versus an eight defense Grim. Interesting. Stardust switches over to the Olgrim to fight against Wesley's Macho Man, and we've got uh, a different play style. It's the thing I like to highlight. We Olgrim's such a common character that I feel like there would be some optimal stance for all of the Olgrim mains out there, or at least Olgrim pocket picks. But no, everybody seems to have a different style. We see two, four, three dex Olgrims, all depending on the region that you're watching and the player that's playing in that region, and we're seeing it here again as we got six versus eight defense going into game number two. Now, I'm a high dex Lance player, so I don't know what you actually gain from the dex stance here. Maybe you get, oh my gosh. Well, maybe you just get the confidence that Wesley has to just bring Stardeath everywhere. Oh. Surprised to start to think of a ground pound there, but Wesley could have acted very quickly out of that. Oh, that down stick coming out was an easy down air punish for Stardust, but side air dodges out of the way and Aceras responded, goes for that recovery, and Wesley jumps a little bit too early, gets hit by the spiking hitbox of that axe recovery, and Stardust continues to put on the damage, but that neutral stick, a little bit too late. The Stardust make it past the weapons, he cannot. Wesley throws everything off the stage, and one of them is bound to hit, and it does. Stardust goes down as Wesley takes the lead in this game. 
both of those weapon tosses were beautiful. Like the arc on the Lance weapon toss. Oh, Wesley! Ooh. He does need to be careful on the edge, though. He did go for the gravity cancel sidelight instead of just continuing with a side air or anything like that. So it did take away his dodge in the air. He was able to get back. Star that still found the knockout on the right side. Yeah, that he did. Wesley had the lead so far in this game, number two, but Star was able to bring it back quite handily. There's that side air, and Wesley's been, ooh, gets a neutral stick weapon throw, no dodge, goes to the ground pound, and it's a little bit too late. He jumped up when he probably didn't need to, considering that side air is going to the stage, but uh, hindsight is 2020. Side air hits again. Wesley's been doing a great job of doing spot dodge stare punishes when he's being stared by his opponent, whether it's a lance stare or an axe side air. He's also done a great job backdashing out of the way of Stardust attacks and then immediately punish because he is so close and he knows the spacing so well. Finds yeah. the side air. Wesley looking at almost a full stock lead. If he puts a little bit of damage, maybe 35 to 40 damage on Stardust, they're going to be in the same boat. Ooh. Wesley went for that down light. Goes for the downer down light once again, but Stardust just keeps dashing away. Wesley getting as much extra credit as he can. The Nairs are being exchanged, but none of them are being hit. So, ooh, a ground pound from Wesley. What a call out. And the neutralite as he slants down the stage. Oh, that's funny. It seems like everything that Wesley's doing is a positive reaction or an offensive reaction. And it seems like everything Stardeth is doing is a negative <gasps> reaction or a defensive oh. reaction to what Wesley's doing. That, it does seem that way. Oh, man, that Haymaker was charged a little bit. Ah, that will get him. Wasn't respecting the possibility of a weapon throw coming out at Stardust, evens up the stocks, but yes, I like what you're saying. Um, Stardust is oftentimes reacting out of getting hit or out of being approached, whereas Wesley's definitely doing the opposite. And oh man, that neutral comes through. Doesn't get the down air into side air. Almost found the neutral signature. Unfortunately, the uh, weapon toss that came out from Stardust bounced off the wall, oh! putting himself with a weapon disadvantage. Side light recovery, not quite enough. He's sending into that diagonal upward hitbox, which is the farthest place you can send your opponent to knock them out. Finds the follow-up side air on the right side. That's going to be the game. That is the game, and now Wesley is up 2-0 over Stardust. Did we have another Legend swap? I didn't even get to see it in time. We do. I see a it Roland is. banning out, and we're going straight to Mammoth Fortress. So now we have Wesley and the Macho Man versus Sir Roland from Stardust, and we have not seen this character played in quite some time. There, there, there was a time where... When the Legend roster was, what, less than 20 Legends? It, Roland was picked all the time, hailed for his very high defense and being able to do so well with the Sword and the Lance. Let's see how Stardust does in this game. Number three is Wesley is on the verge of going into Winner's Finals against Fiend. Yeah, we'll, we'll still occasionally see him. It's usually in like 2v2s. We'll, uh, we'll see like a, a Remy pull out a Roland every now and then. Roland used to be one of the Lance legends to play. Like people weren't playing Vrax, people were playing Scarlet, and people were playing Lance or uh, Roland. Those were the only real Lance characters that people thought were viable. He does have the sword coming in. The Lance from Stardust was looking okay, but Wesley is just, again, putting out a lot of damage. Stardust Sword is doing a lot better than previous characters. Mm-hmm. But you have to be afraid of Wesley's lands. Yeah, Wesley is covering every single landing from Stardust now that he's on the low. <gasps> oh, okay. He did touch the stage, and he barely avoided that weapon throw, but he can't make it back. Wesley went, dipped a little bit too far down, and Stardust was able to punish. And for the first time this set, Stardust has a uh, serious lead. Wesley's without a weapon, gets the falling side air, picks up an axe. Stardust goes for the sidelight into the neutral air, a true combo option, but does drop it. Almost gets the perfect free hit read there. I think he was a little bit hesitant to go for that other Sayer. Oh man, trying to catch him on those recoveries early on. I think those are actually will KO now, but if he fishes it for too, fishes for them too much, Stardust is going to get too much extra credit for him to come back from. Weapon toss went straight up, didn't manage to pick it up, and the Sarah catches Stardust jumping in place. Good KO, Wesley didn't take too much damage for his treble. Weapon's gonna get juggled, Wesley staying with the Lance. Spawn coming right in, seemingly directly to Stardust. And it's the sword, that's what he did so much damage on Wesley's first stock with. D-Light recovery coming out. Stardust doing a great job of punishing Wesley's whiffed moves. 
Yeah, Wesley went for the Nair recovery. Found the Nair on the way back down, but this is just small damage so far against the Roland. Okay, Nair recovery connects that time. And now the Nairs are just flying out. Wesley, unafraid. Neutralite comes through, puts up the down sig, and lets it go a little bit early. That way, Starter Death can't get the punish. Damage yeah, almost side air, here. Side air, down air, neutralite, all of those are kind of directed attacks in one direction. But of course, the neutral air gives you that 360 degree hitbox, and he's finding a lot more traction with that against Stardust Sword. Ooh, went for the Nair. Double Nair, no recovery. But now it's dead even, and Wesley could get this first stock here and take it away. Nair comes through, and the neutral sig after the dash back. Stardust falls down, maybe expecting a recovery after the Nair, but Wes Wesley just putting up the neutral sig that he hasn't used all set. Take that stock, and you make it back with this recovery. No, down air connects. Stardust makes it dead even, and now potentially a winner's bracket stock up against Wesley, who has a 2-0 lead over him. Just needs this last one to go against Fiend, or will Stardust open up the possibility for that reverse 3-0? Doesn't drop the sidelight in air. You see Wesley going for a little bit of a different option. Sidelight into the down air. There's the down air, D-light, neutral light. Ooh, he chain dodged twice instead of just chase dodging once. I think he could have just chase dodged once into the D-light after the neutral light. I don't think it would have sent him too far. Ooh, doesn't get the side air right afterwards. Start that dodges straight through. Starlight Nair and a double Nair. Oh, does he get the recovery? But he's got Stardust on the ropes. Weapon Toss wasn't dodged out of the way, so Stardust able to pick it up again. And the Falling Nairs are just hitting him at the very tail end. They're doing so much damage. Oh, Nair again. Wesley chased out just straight up and gets the Cider. Disarms him. Is that going to be the stock? <gasps> That's it. Wesley's going to take it 3-0. Once he started throwing out those Nairs... That was so much unanswered damage that he was putting onto Stardeath. And one of the interesting things he was doing is he was choosing whether he wanted to do a Nair facing Stardeath or facing away from Stardeath, depending on when he wanted it to hit. Because, of course, you jump on the lance, you ride it, it starts below you, goes in front of you, up, and then behind you towards the end. Mm -hmm. So if you start off with a reverse Nair, you're hitting them behind you, so you want to turn around, face them, then do a regular neutral air facing them so the hitbox comes out fast. Yeah, we saw an excellent display of everything that you said there, basically, from Wesley towards the end of that game.